All right, good evening. Um, let's see, I had promised you I'm gonna make a short video about these cord plugs they have for the quiz control modules. And all what they really do is they distinct. The base units are basically the same and these plugs define this. It's a diesel engine, four cylinder, five cylinder. It's a eight cylinder or it's a six cylinder gasoline engine. The 0732 is universally adaptable for all 420s and 560s. From um, 1985 until 1991 or 92. And I can show you this here. The, uh, there's a website out here, which is called mbteilekatalog.info. I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna put that link in the uh, description below. And here you can, first of all, select your language. Let's go to English. And I got this from JP. He had this. The first thing is we wanna select the car. And then we're gonna go and say, I have a 560. And the 560 is, where is it here? All the way in the back. And now we're gonna look. I have the 560 US version. This is the 560 SEL USA. And now you go all the way down here where it says uh, electrical system. Mm -hmm. Now we should go all the way to the bottom here. Oops. No, nope, that's the wrong one. Electrical equipment and instruments, sorry. That's the one you want to go to. Then you're going to go all the way to the bottom, and there it is, Tempo Mod, cruise control. And now you're going to see all the drawings, and here we have in number five, which is the first one is our control unit, and here you can see this actually. Let me zoom in here. So the first number they had beginning with the model year 85 was the 0545450532 with the plug 0055450732. And now I got to go back here just a second. And this is our plug 0545450732 made week 1789. Okay, now you will see here they have listed all the replacement units we had. So the original replacement unit was actually a 003 0732 So the plug was 005, starting with 005, and the control unit was 003. The 545-0732 were the same. This is the same unit on the 560, SEC, SEL, and SL. And the same for the 420 SEL. You can look it up. Then this control unit was replaced by the 0532, which was then replaced. That is the one I got. So I got the 0532 with the 0732. That's the second generation which I have from which I showed you. Then came the 4032 and the 7732 and the 2132 and the coding parts state the same so you have a total of four different part numbers one two three four five you got five different control units and either one of them will work if you can get a new and they work with with the uh, coding unit or coding part what they call it now people said I have read this in the uh, on these bulletin boards that they think that they you know, coding plugs might be bad. Uh, that's the wrong picture, you see. And um, these are the the eight pins: A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, H. And um, for our unit, they have resistors. I got this all prepped here, and let me just show you this here on this one here. Here you can see it. The uh, resistors here are on the inside, 
and I had that written down in the other paper and of course here's my paper here you see it you can see this decoding plug on top of this let me see if I can open a third window with this yeah see here's the the big cutout and here's the little cutout and the plug itself is coated so you cannot see this you have a smaller area here that's the small one so you cannot put it in backwards and um, I got this here on my paper too let me see yeah right here so this is the big one on the big one you have the 3.3 .3 kilo ohm then you have a 0 0.1 ohm resistor, a 27 kilo ohm resistor, a 1.5 kilo ohm, and a 500 kilo ohm. And the way I measured those resistors is by going in between here, by taking that out and so testing them right here on the circuit board. You can see that so this is the big one, so this would be the 3.3 .3 here. Then you have the 0 0.1. Now, when people say that the unit might be bad because they don't, they, just, they can test it. There is no way of testing this really because they are connected in multiple positions. They're basically cascaded, and you have 256 combinations because you have an 8-bit bus. That's why you got eight pins, and uh, so that will yield 256 different possibilities with these resistor values. Uh, you know, measured across the eight different uh, pins. But if you want to verify that your unit is working, those are the resistor values you need to have. And I can see that the 0 0.1 ohm resistor can get damaged. And the reason for this is that was used in uh, instead of a jumper wire. I don't know, you may remember this in the 70s and 80s and 60s, actually it started, that Japanese came out with the low-cost hi-fi stereos and um, they used single-sided boards and they needed to use a lot of jumper wires, you know, because uh, you have to connect the tracks. You have less of this on a double-sided board and you may have to go to multi-layer boards, but they didn't have them back then. So they used jumper wires and that is not a very clean thing. So VDO we used 1% uh, metal film resistors and most of the stuff for accuracy and um, longevity decided to use um, 0 0.1 ohm resistors which also serve as fuses. Let me show you this real quick here. This is the actual circuit board which is in there and you can see this here on here. This is where the code plug goes in here down here. And here's our regular connector to all the peripherals outside. And here you can ah, you can see it too good, but you can see one here. This is these are the green ones with the black marks. These are all 0 0.1. See how many times they used them? Here's one here. Here's one here. Here's one here, and here's one here. These they basically serve the function as a fuse too, as a small fuse which is just a few milliamps, you know, and I think there's another one right back here too. So these are all the ones you want to test and you want to test them inside the plug because that would be the one which is going to pop. The other one, the voltages would have to be too high in there. So highly unlikely that they're going to go bad. But let me just see that I get the uh, paper correct. I have to actually turn this one around and then this will match and then we can put them next to each other. Uh, let me just see left, left. Make this half. Make this half. So now we can actually see them. So now they are basically correct. So the first one we have here, let me go a little bit further out. The first one is the 3.3 .3 across here. Then you have the 0 0.1, the 27 kilo ohm, the 1.5 kilo ohm, and then here the 500 kilo ohm, and the last one is empty. So this is how you can test this. The other thing is you want to watch out for is where I can see that this plug is not working is with these 
wires, which is basically the connection. That is where your socket is, where you plug it in. It plugs in, it's polarized. You cannot put this backwards in together. It will fit only in one way, so you don't have to worry about it when you open it up. And I can imagine if they get pushed in too hard, that they break here. That there would be a breakage in either one of these four here or on the other side if they have been plugged in and plugged out and plugged in and plugged out. That I can see. But this is basically on how this works. So you all have the same one. That's this plug here. And it will work with any of the control units. I gave you these numbers earlier. And you can find them on the website. Uh, let me just see where's my plug here, the 545. So this plug will work in any cruise control made from 85 until 92. It's five different models, same plug for your V8 engine for a six cylinder. You're gonna have a different number. For a diesel, you're gonna have a different number. You can look them up. They're gonna be listed in here. So say like if you had that 300 SDL, see if we find that one, that car for you. Let's see, go back here, Major FG Jassy. That's 300. Let's see if we find that one, if that's a 300 SE. 300 SDL, SD. Yeah, let's just say we're gonna go with the 300 SD. We go with the up to, yeah, we go STL. So that is the later version. And here is your electrical equipment and instruments. And we go back again to the bottom. And there you will see. Here's your control unit. Aha. And on this one, they have a separate control unit. Okay. So you can see this here. Your control unit would be an unplugged version, probably an older one. And uh, that has a different one. Let me see. Not all of them have the uh, plugs in there. Some of them do. Let's just show you this here. I'm going to go back to the 560. That's a little bit easier. Let's just say we're going to go with the... Uh, German version, the Sondershoot Special Edition that was the protective version. That is the one with 290 horsepower. And here we can get it in the armored um, bulletproof glass and this, that, and the other thing. And uh, VIP protection, basically. And here again, you have the same thing. You got one, two, three, four. They had four, they didn't make it as long. Um, units and they're all the same part numbers and again you have the same coding plug you can see this even for this unit here it is the same coding plug as for the other one same base units what you have the 0732 or 532 so that's basically the one I got is this here so you get the idea all right um, my suspicion is for all of you who have problems with it, either because that thing loses its memories or what have you. You see, you have these two transistor packs here, um, which are switched to these Darlingtons here and these two Darlingtons here from the microcontroller. And one of them is going to be for your motor control, and the other one is going to be for your um, for your clutch and uh, the feedback signal and the coding is all happening over here on this part so this is like the right hand side is the inside uh, the uh, the input part of the system and the left side is the output side that's where these capacitors come into the game and that's why they're important you can see you have a pretty heavy hitter diode here uh, in order to probably from the clutch uh, to avoid any uh, backfiring into the system and this that and the other thing so they're heavily armed. And these two coil systems here, I believe, are current limiting and also current control. That means that's where the currents are measured, so this unit will shut itself down. These transistors are mounted on a heatsink, but they have no NTC or PTC mounted next to them. 
so they can overheat actually and since it is a metal enclosure you wouldn't see any heat discolorations in there uh, <clears throat> this is what i suspect is going to be the trouble area is here with the transistors i'm going to go in there when i have some time and i will trace the contacts back because this is pin one three five and seven these two pins here are basically the clutch and the motor and then you have the other part of the motor is over here on pin 10 i believe 10 12 and 14 that's the two grounds this is your plus 12 supply uh, right here i'm showing my little mouse bar here and then you have up here is the uh, 9 and uh, 9 and uh, 11 and 13 this is the resistor feedback coming back and the other ones are just the two four six and eight is for your brake and the lever and so is number three over here for the actual stick the joystick kind of thing what you got on the steering wheel i do not know what this part is called but anyway they go in here i'm also not quite sure exactly of what purpose this device here uh, uh, serves it is a resistor type network what they put in here it's a sim a single inline module and uh, i'm not quite sure of what that thing is going to do or not so i have to do some digging i will do a little bit more of a video here for the repair on these uh, when we actually get to the repair of this unit and i will show you or the uh, speedometer that is another thing is i have not been able on all these bulletin boards god knows hundreds of thousands of users across the internet no one has ever published actually the uh, signal of what the signal for the speedometer looks like and i believe it originates either out of the the differential or it comes out of the transmission and it is the signal goes to the ecu it goes to the uh, idle speed control it goes to the air conditioning system it goes to the car radio it goes to your speedometer of course that's that big signal plug you got in the back there the big black one and it goes to this unit here they're all parallel basically so this signal goes in here i'm pretty sure it's a square wave i do not know if that's five volt signal or 12 volt signal and then the question is what frequency how what is the frequency it's probably a 50 50 or 50 percent duty cycle and it's gonna vary in frequency base frequency uh and that's the same thing what they're doing what comes out of the ezl which is your rpm which they call td is uh, there's going to be 1000 rpm is going to be whatever frequency it is and the same as with the speed 20 20 miles per hour is going to be whatever frequency it is that i haven't been able to find anywhere documented <clears throat> i guess that was an internal number they had from uh video because they built most of the stuff since they built the speedometer too they probably more or less dictated this of what that is and uh, we will see here Maybe one day we're going to find it. I have to measure it. I can actually drive and stick it in there and see what comes out of it. And then actually take a snapshot and actually publish this too. Because once you put a signal uh, on here, a square wave, on your speed, one, one, three, five is the signal, five, five and seven clutch. I forgot now, one of them is the uh, speed signal on here. Which one was that? <clears throat> motor clutch speed is 11 oh this was this up here 11 is here 11 that's your speed signal you put that in and at one point it starts to work you make a connection to your run start um, to your on off pin 3 to 12 because that's a normally closed signal so it has 12 volts when you disconnect pin 3 from 12 volts that's when the shuts off that's a positive control in this case so it has to have 12 volts and then basically if you do excel you should see action coming out of pin 5 and pin 7 uh, basically you should see these things acting here and uh, that's what i'm going to do a little test setup with this unit here where we can actually check this um, i have a signal generator where i can generate these uh, square waves out of with no problem over a wide variety of frequencies and we can figure out what this is going to be so I will see when I get to this, I will post another video with this circuit board here on the test bench 
and oscilloscope and, and there's some LEDs on there so we can actually see what happens out of this unit. We take a closer look electrically at the code plug and then make another part out of this. I guess that concludes it for tonight and you have a good evening.